2018, it's a new year, and for 188 professional anglers, it is full of new possibilities. This body of water is known as the Big O, and it is just that, big, measuring 730 square miles and visible from space. But to find a bass, you have to make a precise cast into some heavy vegetation. Over the past 22 seasons, FLW has visited Okeechobee more than any lake in the country. It's like a second home to many of the anglers. It's been where some of the most iconic fish catches in FLW history have taken place. Sadly, it's also been the site of a tragic accident at the FLW series opener just a few weeks ago. Nick Kaler and Bill Kasaya went out on day one of the event with the same hopes and dreams as any of the anglers that day. They encountered rough waters, struck a wave, and Nick was swept overboard. But through these darkest of times, a brotherhood of anglers has come together this week to honor one of their own and to showcase their faith and their love of the sport. Perhaps the best way to get past the grief is to get back out on the water, to make the next cast, to find a way to deal with sudden loss. Let our faith comfort us and take the burden from our shoulders. And now the field prepares to go out on the water for what can best be described as an emotional roller coaster. One among them will take a step closer toward becoming a champion, but not one of them will forget their fellow angler, Nick Kaler. Welcome everyone to Lake Okeechobee and the first stop of the 2018 FLW Tour season. I'm Travis Moran alongside my co-host Rob Newell. Rob, this event, normally energetic, everyone's excited to start the year, but it's been a little different feeling. Travis, once again, the fishing community has, has come together. I mean, you see the emotions running high. The guys are wearing the Nick Kaler armbands this week. Uh, the Coast Guard did the special man overboard ceremony for him. So it's, it's been a very heart heartfelt week. You can see with, with the wristbands and such that Nick Kaler is on all their minds. Today is the third day. So we're down to our 30 anglers blasting off today to uh, compete for this third and hopefully make it to the fourth and final day. But before they get to that fourth day, they've still got to get past the big O, Lake Okeechobee. And it is a huge fishery that has had some changes. It looks a little different than when they fished it last. To me, this lake, the, the productive areas have shrunk maybe one one twentieth of what they were. So I would think that every fish in these big, famous areas are now in small spots. Fish are spawning. They're pulling in pretty good. We've been waiting on them all week, you know, with this warm weather, and finally the females are pulling in. The bucks have been in for, well, since Tuesday, the last practice day. So now the females are starting to join them and pair up. We come here to Lake Okeechobee, seems to be where the FLW Tour starts the season a lot. I've been down here like for 20 years. This year, a little different. Hurricanes have kind of ripped up uh, the Big O. It's a little bit different place, but it doesn't matter how this lake changes. The same areas are always in play here, Travis. You have Kings Bar, Tin House Cove, South Bay, the Monkey Box, but this week has been all about Harney Pond. It was a tough practice. I didn't catch many big ones. Um, there's a cold front, but it's warming up and it's a full moon and they're coming in and they want to spawn. So they showed up for us in the tournament and uh, hoping to put a few of those in the live well today. We're on a lake that's got them. We're in an area that's got them opportunities like this, you know, come along not very often. The conditions have been super windy. Uh, the good thing is it's been staying warm and I think it's got fresh fish coming in every day. Well, Rob, those fish are still in the lake somewhere. So we're about to find out real quick who's put together a strategy that's gonna last because day three starts now. Let's get it.
as you can see back there, they're, they're going to spawn in all those reeds and everything. And there's also some isolated bushes out there that can spawn on. So this is just a good area for them to, you know, just post up on. Water looks absolutely phenomenal. This a warm, you know, a warm night. You would think you'd pull up here and it'd be boom, 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 boom. But I'm hoping I could figure out the morning deal a little bit better. I'm trying a little bit different water this morning. Not far, very close, but a little, little bit deeper. For Okeechobee, you know, whenever I interview people, I always ask them, well, are you punching or are you casting and winding or something? Because it's usually kind of one or the other. You're either punch, punching through a big mat or you're casting and winding. And this week for sure has been dominated with the reaction bite, the casting and winding. A lot of these guys, uh, on the swim jig game, on the chatterbait game, in kind of open water with hydrilla, um, where fish are moving in, staging up right before they go on beds. And um, the wind on Okeechobee really kind of forces you to, you know, cast and wind something. There hasn't been a whole lot of matted stuff, so these places are crowded. When the wind gets like that, it's a cast and wind kind of game. Lake Okeechobee, you can win a couple different ways, you know, you can win flipping or you can win, you know, winding something, you can win, you know, throwing a dead stick Sanko around. So I checked everything and I just went with what I had the most bites with and, you know, this week that's what I've been doing. I've been winding and, you know, just really covering a lot of water in a small area. Big one. Oh, he's not big. He's not big. Brian's that classic case of success breeding success. Uh, the guy's had some coastal wins. Uh, last year he gets his first tour win and it looks like he's really developing that kind of closing instinct to close these things up. But he's a start. You can look at him here. He is super relaxed, super composed. Everything is going his way. Guys are out fishing right now. There's 30 of them. Let's take a look at our leaderboard. Here's the top 10. Rob, we're gonna be making a cut. We've cut our field of 188 down to 30. Tomorrow, there's only gonna be 10 left. So if you're not in this 10 slots right here, uh, come the end of the day, you're not gonna be fishing tomorrow. But we've got some big names, some expected guys, and then we've got some other random guys that, uh, that, are, gonna, that are making a good showing early on in the year. Two sets of brothers inside that top 20 there. Uh, the Johnson brothers and also Brandon and Jared McMillan and they're kind of cool to have uh, a couple of brothers. We've extended our cut to 30 this year. So here is 10 guys that are getting a chance to uh, try to make that final cut. Mark Rose started the day in second place right behind Brian Schmidt. Um, and he's looking to make history again. Last year won back to back on the first and second events of the season and right in the hunt to do it again. You, you know it's gotta be on his mind, it's on all of our minds. And he's in the right areas because he's fishing right next to Brian Schmidt, Chris Johnston, Tim Frederick, all these top guys, same area. Water temperature is 63 degrees. It's just perfect for Florida staging, pre-spawn, coming in to spawn fishing. Big spawning flat between Ice Ditch and Horny Pond. It's been a place where, you know, people have won here in the past. A very popular area for fish to come in and spawn. And what I like about it is you got a hard line and then you got some flats back behind the hard line for fish to spawn on. But then you have good clean hydrilla out in front of it. Mark Rose has a lot of years of fishing history under his belt. Uh, several years ago, we called him the ledge master, thinking that, that well, that's all he's good at, was TVA, impoundments, you know, he could definitely win there. Now, last year, the win at Gunnersville in the spring, in the grass up shallow, then goes out to Texas, wins out there uh, on a Texas lake. Man, how nice would it be for Rose to add a Florida Okeechobee win to his mantle. And now looking at the split screen, we've got Tim Frederick over on the right. He actually guides just up the road at the Harris Chain. And uh, this Florida pro is known mostly for his sight fishing abilities. Yeah, Travis, but no sight fishing here this week for Tim. Uh, but he, he is using some old Florida tricks that he's learned down there on the Harris Chain, uh, casting at some of these uh, single isolated reed stems where fish are bedding. 
So he might not be per se looking right at these fish, but he knows they're there. I'm fishing in a bay that's probably 30 acres, I guess, 25, 30 acres, and it's scattered pencil reeds and some sticks, and I'm, tar I'm target fishing each one of them. Fish will set up and spawn on the pencil reeds, the roots, along with the sticks, so I'm just uh, hitting as many targets as I can hit in a day. It's a little better. When he went and pre-fished for this event, uh, first day he went out, he had two bites in this area, and he kept moving around, but he knew the fish were in this area, so kept moving around, moving around. Second day, had four bites. And here, the third Come day, here. 40 bites, Come Rob. So it, that, you talk about that wave down, moving up that last day. Come he here. found where they are, has the confidence, and sure, this is an area where the winning fish are. Yes. Woo! That's why, that's what the females are. Oh man, Tim Frederick with a possible game changer. That's a bonus big bass early in the game. Fish number two, probably five and a half, six pounds. At least five. It's a good start. Rob, fishing action is heating up. Day three is underway. Do not go anywhere. We'll be right back. The FLW Tour is brought to you by BRP Evanrude. Learn more at evanrude.com. Costa Del Mar. See what's out there. Yeti. Built for the wild. TH Marine. From transom to trolling motor. Power Pole. Swift, silent, secure. And by General Tire, anywhere is possible. There's one. They're gonna be a lot bigger than that. Hey! There's one. He's not big, but we might just figure something out. Welcome back. It's the season opener of the 2018 FLW Tour presented by Evanrude. Here is our look at the leaderboard. We've got 30 anglers out fishing today for those top 10 spots right there. Brian Schmidt putting some fish in the bag, but still waiting for those bigger fish to move in. Tim Frederick, same thing, said he caught a bonus fish with that six pounder he caught in the morning, but he's really expecting like the top, like all our top anglers, that the bigger fish are gonna move later on in the day. And you know, Travis, we've talked a lot about people up on Harney Pond and uh, you know, up north. We, there are some guys fishing down south. Chad Morgenthaler, one of them. The McMillan brothers are down there, down south. Brandon Mosley as well. There are fish being caught down there. Which leads us, Rob, right into the General Tires Roadmap to Victory. Yep, Travis, three things I'm looking at here. Fresh fish, you gotta have fish that are replenishing. You can't count on residential fish back in Moonshine Bay or somewhere way back. You have gotta have fish that are coming in from the main lake. That's why Harney Pond is such a critical place. It's one of those key funnel areas. Second thing, these guys are gonna have to pay attention to water color and follow the best water color. We've had a lot of east wind. It's blowing the water color around. It's blowing the mud around, but as the mud moves around, so does the clear water windows. That's what those fish are gonna be in. They will move with that water color. You gotta stay with it. And finally, Two big bites a day, that's what they're gonna need. I know that sounds obvious, but trust me, after practice, this tournament was setting up to be a struggle fest. It was gonna be, a guy's gonna catch a big weight the first day and hang on, but that has not been the case during the tournament. It has turned into a slug fest. These guys are bringing in 24, 25 pounds a day for the lead. You're gonna have to have two big bites in that six to seven pound class per day to get this done. Rob, some great points. Now let's head out of the water with Brian Schmidt and see if he's following the same roadmap. All right, guys, we only got four. Um, very, very tough morning. I don't know what to make of it just yet. I'm hoping that when it gets good, it gets really good. We are definitely here for the duration. It's just a grind. It's just who's going to do the, you know, who's going to figure it out today is really going to make a statement. Rob, Brian Schmidt sitting with four fish in the live well, really looking for that fifth and final fish to complete that limit. 
Yeah, he's got four in there that aren't real big. And, you know, on the roadmap to victory, I said, these guys will need two big bites. And uh, he hasn't had one yet. Big. Giant. This is what everyone has been waiting for right here. All the anglers waiting for those that wave to come in, that first sign that big fish are coming in, and look at that. Oh, my. Whoa! That's the sign he needs. You could tell everybody's getting a little shaky on their plan. That just told him you're right on schedule. Yep. You're, you're right. Everything is exactly like it should be. Never know, dude, and that's number five. When you're Are fifth you fish like that, the, the one you need to round out your limit is the giant kicker. That means things might be lining up to go your way for the rest of the week. When there's that many boats on a spot, it makes it tough. The fish don't want to bite as much because there's trolling motors running over their head, and it's only three feet of water. And when you go behind someone, there's a mud trail on your trolling motor. So um, it makes it really tough. You got to slow down. and. You kind of got to pay attention though, because you've got to get to water that probably hasn't had a boat over in a little bit, find a hole, let it sit for a minute, and then go over and fish it, and then power pull down and just kind of have an area that hasn't been run over too much, so. All these boats around here all caught probably a couple, seven or eights, and yesterday there's probably about 30 boats in here, and you see the odd eight pounder caught, so there's lots of them in here, just got to trick a couple of them up. Both brothers, uh, Chris and Corey, who are both fishing today in the top 30, very comfortable fishing grass. Another little buck, but start with five. That one's a little better. Chris has done well here on Okeechobee before. Two years ago, got a third place. He'd probably like to finish a little bit higher than third this time. Hopefully they're starting. Very comfortable with catching just limit fish so he can feel comfortable, sit back, and look for those bigger fish for the rest of the day. Tim Frederick told me yesterday, Rob, that he was going to be sticking to his game plan, these isolated reed clumps, and now he's got a good one on right here. Oh, yeah, look at, you can see the little stem out there in front of him. That's the, the little stem, that reed stem, is where that big female was spawning. Yep, a guy with a lot of confidence, too, in this area. He found this earlier in the month before the coast event, and the fish are still here. So he knows, he firmly believes there is enough fish in this area to pull off the victory. So he may make some changes, may make some little adjustments. And just like that, it changes. And this is the second big one for Tim Frederick today. Woo! Yes. I'm using a 3 16th ounce lead. Anything heavier, there's too, too much silt. It'll cover your bait and your, your hook. If you go any lighter with this wind, you, you can't feel nothing. So I think the weight's a big key for me, and, and I'm using nothing but fluorocarbon. Everybody else is using braid. I'm, I think I get more bites on the fluoro. Tim Frederick all the way up to that second place spot, but Brian Schmidt and Mark Rose still right there. So stay tuned, more action on the FLW Tour when we return. That's the sound of Lake Okeechobee there, air bones. <laughs> I'm happy to get it. That's five. Oh, baby, stay pinned. Yes. Welcome back. It's the 2018 FLW Tour season opener presented by Evinrude. Not much time left on day three here on Lake Okeechobee. Yeah, Travis, for 20 of these guys, they're going home. Only 10 are advancing to the final day. And Mark Rose mentioned this in the morning. You know, you see a guy coming in with a 25 pound bag, you go, oh man, he was smashing yeah. them all day that's long. Right. Not true, no. it's just, that's only five fish and you gotta take advantage of those five bites. And, uh, and I think that some things can really change here in the last couple hours and, and show that there's still some more fish available in there. I knew that these big fish were fixing to come. Just opposite from every other place in the country, these Florida lakes, they need cool weather to trigger their spawn. And uh, that cool weather, that was right before the tournament, and then we had a little bit of warming trend during the tournament, 
just was a good recipe for the big ones to move in. Man, it has been a grind. We got five. They don't weigh a lot, but I was able to get a five pounder, so if we could just get a, if we could just get us a big one. Mark Rose is the guy that's kind of experimented around more than some of the other guys, changing colors, changing weights. Will somebody pick up on something a little different? Yeah. Will we see somebody make a change in a bait? That helps. Or maybe a small change in an area or uh, even a cadence or a retrieve and dial something else up to get back on the trail of these fish. Schmidt and Rose here both have brought in some consistent giant bags of nice Okeechobee fish. Yeah, you can see these guys eyeballing each other. And they're all kind of within sight of each other. And he's keeping track of where the pressure's being applied. I really think this tournament's gonna be won today. Whoever does really good or really bad, it's, it's for some reason my gut's telling me today's the big move. This is exactly how I would want to start the year off. Um, first tournament of the year, I'm in contention to win. Uh, you know, never had a start like this, so I'm very excited. That'll help. The Smith train is leaving the station. <laughs> that will help. I've been trying to do this professionally on the tour. This is my third year, but I've fished my whole life. As a kid, it was a dream of mine to fish professional, but uh, to win a tournament against these guys, you know, they could never take that away from me. That day or that week, I was better than everybody, and it, it would mean the world to me financially. I don't know about you, but $100,000 to me is life changing. You know, I'm a pretty simple guy, you know, I don't require a lot of great stuff, but uh, it's sure nice knowing you had a little pad in the bank, you know, for, for the future. Today I didn't have too much company. There was only a couple boats in there, so it, no one really got in my way. So I kind of got the run of the mill. My water stayed clean, which is a bonus. I, I got to stick with it. It got me this far, so I'm going to stick with it tomorrow and hope that it uh, rewards me all the way. Yes. That'll get rid of that last little one. Now I got 20. That'll work. Time is up for these anglers on day three. The only thing left is for Chris Jones to let us know who's gonna make the top 10 cut and move on to day four. Brandon McMillan, 15 pounds, 14 ounces, Corey Johnston, 16 pounds and 12 ounces, five today for Scott Canterbury Worth. 18 pounds, six ounces. I've been stuck at that house for the last six months, but that sure is good to get back out on the water and do some fishing and catch some fish finally. Five Worth. 18 pounds and six ounces, Sharon McMillan. 16 pounds and four ounces, Brian Schmidt. Tim Frederick, new leader. 23 pounds and three ounces, wow! The bottom line is, you know, I stuck with it, I stayed focused, and uh, it, it rewarded me for that. So there's some good anglers in this line, and uh, I'm just proud to be here. Tim Frederick moves up from fourth place to take the lead going into the final day. But the Evan Rude big mover of day three is Chad Morgenthaler, who hauled in 19 pounds and 14 ounces of Lake Okeechobee bass to move up 13 places and will start the final day in fifth place. It's the fourth and final day here on the season opener of the FLW Tour. We started with 188 anglers, and now we're down to 10, Rob. Yeah, a couple of interesting storylines going on here, Travis. Uh, dominant story so far has been up at Harney Pond Canal. Brian Schmidt, Mark Rose battling it out up there, swim jigs, chatter baits. But today, something else is coming into the picture. South Bay might play. Chad Morgan Thaler's down there. Uh, also, the McMillans are down in South Bay. Can South Bay apply any pressure? Also, 
Tim Frederick. And he's just slow worming. He's not really jigging. He's not punching down there in South Bay. Tim Frederick, fishing for spawning bass on single reeds. Yesterday scared me a little bit because I, I went like three and a half hours without a bite, but we had no sunshine and a lot of wind. Today it's going to be partly sunny. I feel like that's the ingredient that I was missing and I need. So I'm very optimistic. I think I can catch another good bag in there today. And then, of course, you got the brother battle going on with the McMillans versus the Johnston brothers and uh, four of your top ten all brothers. Oh, to make it with my brother, this is amazing. Amazing. Um, this is an amazing feeling to be here uh, after my uh, practice wasn't so good. It's, uh, I'm really happy to be here. I'm not quite where I would like to be in the top ten. Um, a little far back, but... Uh, Hey, we're here and we got a shot to win, so we're gonna swing for the pants today. Two sets of brothers in the top 10 uh, this tournament is pretty cool. Uh, Brandon and Jared and Chris and I, and uh, more and more young people that they see, uh, you know, see us being young, getting into the sport, doing well. Uh, you know, these, these young kids need to jump on board and get into fishing and, uh, you know, you make a good living out of it. Another exciting thing is to see if Tim Frederick can hold on that number one spot that he slid into over Brian Smith yesterday. The guys are getting ready to blast off right now. Let's do this thing. When I got here this morning, water temperature is 64, 65, so it's warming up fast with this sun. So I'm trying to get in some of these protected areas that is not has no wind. Places like this, the sun just beams down on these little pockets like this and uh, warms it up really quick. I'm just trying to put my bait in places that probably normally don't see a top water. People don't think to throw a top water in a place where you make two twitches and you're out. Look at Mark Rose. This is why he is such a dangerous angler. Changing things up this morning, throwing top water. Yeah, these veteran anglers, they know something has changed, Travis. They know something's up. This is when they start experimenting a little bit to see if they can get back on the trail. That's fishing. That's trying to get in tune with the day and, and the water that day and, and just fishing your instincts. And I went and did everything that I, yeah. you know, knew to try. Just needed a little top water bait. But like I said, I'm just trying to do something that Maybe somebody hasn't thought of in here. This area has gotten a lot of pressure. Just throwing a little double prop bait. And now to Chad Morgan Taylor. Rob, you've been saying you wanted to see these guys fishing south. Here's your chance. That's right, South Bay, baby. This is where the big mats are. Morgan Taylor is going to be in here all day, punching this place with a big weight. South Bay is overdue. The time is now for a big truckload of new fish to move in this area. Rob and all you guys take a look finally at South Bay. This is the stuff that I look for whenever I come to Okeechobee, and it moves around. You know, hurricanes move it, high waters, uh, high winds, things of that nature. It pushes all this stuff around, changes it all from year to year mainly. I'm really trying to use my ounce and a half weight here as much as I can, but I don't like fighting that thing to get it down. Oh, God. Come here. That's a good way to start the morning, Rob. Now that's the size we're after today right there. Got to like that. Look at that thick mat of junk. <laughs> that's the perfect stuff. Yeah. And that's how quick it turns around right there. When you get that going early and you're not having to search for it, it just clicks right off the bat. Such a good feeling. And now over to Tim Frederick, uh, fishing the same water that he fished day one, two, and three. Yeah, it's Tim's third year on tour, and he's leading here at Lake Okeechobee at the season opener. That's the kind of thing you dream of. I got tired of the reeds. I had already beat them pretty heavily, and I remember when I pulled in there that morning, I seen a big fish bust up in the little dollar pads and everything. So. I dug in my box and I had a, I happened to have a frog tied on a, and I said, well, let me throw this frog around a little bit. We mixed it up just a few minutes ago and came up to this sloppy looking area. We kind of started about 100 yards from here and I seen a big one blow up in the slop. So I said, I'm going to remember that. Well, fishing out in my normal spot is really slow right now. So I figured I'd come up here and try this until the water heats up a little.
Wow, Frederick, how do you like that? He's been yes. using a worm yeah. up until now, picks up a frog, sticks a huge key five pounder. Decisions. That was a good decision. Yeah, that's pretty amazing, Travis. I said yesterday it was gonna take two big bites a day. I'm saying on the final day, you're only gonna need one bite like that to get this done. Welcome back to our final day coverage here on Lake Okeechobee, and this is our first look at Corey Johnston. Man, I've 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 had a tough morning. Uh, I've lost two great big ones. I just lost one now, um, probably in the four pound range, and the other one I just lost is probably in that five to seven pound range. So um, I'm just just trying to make a adjustment here on my bait. They're just. I don't know. I, I opened the hook up on on both of them a bit, and I'm using a real light rod, and I'm just uh, going to a bait with a bit stouter hook here to see what uh, see if I can keep the hook in them. The good news is it's reassuring that he's getting the bites. Yeah, that's always nice. That's the uh, positive side. And now look at Brian Schmidt. Rob, he is sticking to his game plan. Yeah, he's getting a little sunshine here this morning. Been a very very warm night. Uh, not as much breeze this morning. I think the window could be opening right now. All these little isolated, you know, semi grass and reed heads in this bay right here, we're gonna make multiple casts at each angle because it's giving me some big fish this week. But today I had plenty of room to move around. We, uh, when I got to my main area today, there was really nobody in my way at all. It helped out a lot. I think it got me a couple bites I wouldn't have got. You know, just it gives the fish comfort. They don't hear the trolling motors and electronics and the motors running. It lets them set up and it's, I think they're easier to catch. So that helped out big time. Big in. Big in, dude. Come on. Might be throttle Come time here. for Schmidt. Oh. Come here. Thank you, Lord. Biggest one I've caught all week. Hook fell right out, dude. Are you kidding me? Woo! Yes, sir. That's number five. When you say biggest one of the tournament and the hook just fell out of its mouth, yep. Two. that's just like, he might as well have said, I'm gonna win the tournament. <laughs> number five, the last two days has been a big one. Well, let me throw this frog around a little bit. I probably made seven throws with it, and then I seen a big wake come after it, and he he just attacked it. So I caught the fish. It was about a five-pounder. The bad news was that's the only frog I had in my boat, and he destroyed it. So from then on, I tried to find anything that I could fish on top to catch them on. I knew they would hit it up top since that frog got smashed, but uh, that might have hurt me a little bit because I felt like I could have caught some more with that. You know the old saying, if you're gonna be dumb, you gotta be tough. I brought one frog with me and just got destroyed by a five pounder, so I gotta, I gotta improvise. We got a limit. And now our first look at a McMillan, but not Brandon. It's his younger brother making his rookie debut here on Lake Okeechobee. Yeah, Travis, the, their dad, Jimmy McMillan, has won on this lake. Brandon McMillan has won, won on this lake, and we've just got one left. Jared McMillan, we call him Little Matt. Even though you're not getting many bites and it doesn't seem like it turns on, they do turn on because I've, I've fished these mats over and over and over and then all of a sudden you'll get a bite. Whether it's just one swims up or, or she was just there and I couldn't get her to bite earlier. Anything rolled up that was thick and had looked like a mat, anywhere that a fish could hide, I was flipping it and and uh, having, to, having to work kind of slow, but fishing kind of fast too still. When I cracked her, I couldn't get her out. She had wrapped me up pretty good and had to go in there. And I knew it was a good one. I didn't know how big. And I'd, as soon as I stuck my hand down in that hole, I stuck my hand right down her mouth and, and drug her out. And it was about a five pounder. It was uh, a huge fish today and 
probably gained me probably three pounds or so. As we get ready to head to break, the big story, Jared McMillan making a big run, putting together a great limit. Lake Okeechobee runs in the McMillan's blood. It could be Jared's time to be the third McMillan to take home a trophy. The FLW Tour is brought to you by Ranger Boats, still building legends one at a time. Real Tree Fishing, the official pattern of FLW. Bass Pro Shops, your adventure starts here. Lawrence HDS Carbon, find, navigate, dominate with Lawrence. Polaris, the world leader in off road vehicles. And by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. Every day I've caught a big one somewhere different. That's what tells me they're probably spawning. You know, this is when the, these are the times when you want to change, when you think about changing what you're doing, and then you weigh that against what's gotten you here. Anywhere in here could happen. This is crunch time right here, man. We have got to get rid of that little one. I might only get one more bite today, but, or might not, but this is part of the flipping deal. You have to keep it in your hand. You gotta have confidence in it. Lost three big ones. Six or seven and two fours. Well, as you can see, the wind's picked up and it's, it's made it pretty hard to fish this area. I had to get myself against a mat. Oh, 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 oh. Oh. Well, when the bite's this tough, you just can't afford to lose fish like that. Welcome back, everyone. Lake Okeechobee, the final day. Rob, right there, the difference between Schmidt and Frederick. Schmidt gets the fish in the boat, the bait falls out. Right there, he says he had the fish he probably needed, and uh, it comes off before he's able to even get a good look at it. The hook set and the rod, the way everything looked to me, it looked like it was going to be a big one. I thought he actually broke me off. He just come unbuttoned. And now look at Brian Schmidt. Schmidt's got two little 12 inch squeakers in there that, I mean, they are fish. They do count, obviously. You can call it a limit, but you can almost look at those two little one pounders as, you know, blank spaces that need to be X'd out. I made a late move here to some backup stuff with some clean water. You know, with the hopes of maybe just getting a couple upgrades, you know, it's a, uh, very late in the tournament to be doing that, but my bites were way down today, and any kind of little upgrade would go a long way right now. Uh-oh, Schmidt. <laughs> At the end of the day, I made a move to a new spot. I was just flipping around a ride stick and got like a really light bite, and I kind of half-heartedly set the hook, and then that fish almost ripped the rod out of my hand. It was another big one, so oh you never know, man. On this lake, you never know. You got to fish to the last second. I want to talk about big time. Big time move, damn. Big time move. And now look at Mark Rose. When you're dealing with, with guys like Mark Rose that are proven closers, he's right behind with a chance to win. And that is exactly where these guys that know how to close process the last clutch play here and, and make his move. Towards the end of the day, I had tried all that stuff in the back. Nothing was working, came out. I was able to just catch one here and there, and just scratch and claw. And, and, um, and then I just kept doing, kept doing it with the vibrating jig, just kept on and on and on. That's my confidence bait. That's what got me here. That's why I went back. That's why I said, this is the area that could I could win it. That's why I feel like that. Right. This is a big moment right here. Yeah. Mark Rose. Uh-oh. Oh. Wow. <laughs> uh -huh. Ooh, you hear that little laugh he just made right there? <laughs> 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 oh, no. Oh. That's the kind of we need, y'all. 
And that's number five for Mark Rose. Travis, it, the weights are way too tight here. It, it's still too close to call this thing. One big fish on the last cast here, and that guy is going to victory lane. In the final hour out on Lake Okeechobee, Mark Rose and Brian Schmidt have both landed a fish that could propel them to victory. That's the kind of we need, y'all. While well, for Tim Frederick, time is running out. You're wondering what everybody else is doing. Do they have them? Do I, you know, what do I got to do? What's my best chance to win? And I, I opted to stay and, and, and beat the bushes. Oh, wow. There we go. Frederick is hooked up. There we go. Rob, if this is a big one, this could be huge. Oh, yes. Oh, my gosh. Yes, yes, Lord, yes. That is a behemoth right there. That is what you need at crunch time to change the game right now. Oh. oh, that fish is trying to get off right now. Come here, baby, come oh, here. Oh, in the net. Yes! Ooh, that is a game changer right there. I mean, we're down to crunch time, Travis. That's a good in there. And he closes right there. Tim Frederick representing for Florida right there. Woo! Turned out okay, I think. We'll see what happens. It's going to be close. Woo! Time is up for our anglers out on the water. And Rob, the big O produced some excitement for us. Yeah, Travis, you know, usually Okeechobee, these tournaments turn into somebody has a big lead going into the final day. You kind of, it's like spoiler alert. We kind of know who the winner is going to be. This one is going down to the wire and that killer instinct is coming out. There's only one thing left. It's time to crown a champion, so we'll throw it over to Chris Jones and the weigh-in. All right, what's up, close to Florida? Wow! 18 pounds and seven ounces, a five-best limit. And they're sporting the Team Big Mac shirts today. 21 pounds, 15 ounces, number four. Four. So you need six pounder, man. I may have fibbed to him just a little bit. You know, I told him I had about 14, 15 pounds. So sorry, bud. Here we go. The kicker. <laughs> 17 pounds and one ounce gets you in second place behind your brother. A five bass limit for Chad Morgan Taylor. Set the bass fishing world on fire last year with two back-to-back -back wins that had never been done in the FLW Tour. Wow! Arkansas's Mark Rose. 17 pounds, two ounces. He is the king of the hill for now. Who's next? Giant. God, I'm like, and that's number five. Are you kidding me? He won last year, stop number six on the FLW Tour in La Crosse, Wisconsin on the Mississippi River. To take out Mark Rose, you need 13 pounds and 14 ounces. Number four, a five-pass limit for Maryland's Brian Schmidt. 19 pounds and 11 ounces moves you into the lead with 84 pounds and two ounces. One guy left. <laughs> Woo! Tim Frederick, you're going to need 18 pounds and 12 ounces. So number four and number five are going to have to go over 12 pounds. A five-pass limit for the Florida Pro Tim Frederick. Wow! All right, here we go. You need 18 pounds and 12 ounces. Tim Frederick, five today, worth. 19 pounds, 14 ounces. Your champion is Tim Frederick of Leesburg, Florida. $100,000 richer is Tim Frederick. An emotional moment, Tim Frederick with his father. I'm blessed. I mean, this is awesome. This is, you know, I dream of this when I was a kid. You know, this is, he taught me everything I knew about fishing. You know, there's so many things you can get into now, but. The outdoors, you can't go wrong with it, so I owe it all to him. 10 minutes left come here, baby, come in the here. tournament day, yes. and he catches the eight pounder, and you needed it. 
Woo! I just stuck with it. You know, as hard as it was, I stuck with it, and it, uh, it paid off. Let's hear it one more time for your champion, Till Frederick, a six-figure payday, and he takes over the Angler of the Year lead on the FLW Tour.